2. Jesus heals a man of the palsy Matthew 9, 1-8 and Luke 5, 17-26. Mark 2 verse 1, KJV, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Capernaum, this was the city where Jesus spent most of his time in the Galilee region that is on the northern tip of the Sea of Galilee. Mark 2 verses 2 to 3, KJV, and straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. The palsy, this is a disease that paralyzes its victims. Mark 2 verses 4 to 5, KJV, And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy sins be forgiven thee, this is something that only God could say and do. This very statement made by Jesus attested to his deity. 1 Kings 8 verses 34 to 36 KJV Then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk, and give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14 KJV If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Mark 2 verses 6 to 7 KJV But there were certain of the scribes sitting there, and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? The scribes, they were responsible for copying scriptures. Since they just heard Jesus say this man's sins were forgiven, Jesus would prove that he could forgive sins by showing these scribes a miracle. Mark 2 verse 8, KJV, And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Jesus perceived in his spirit, because Jesus was God, he knew what people were thinking. Matthew 16 verse 8 KJV Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Mark 2 verse 9 KJV Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk? Whether is it easier to say, this is an old way of saying, which is easier to say. While neither saying was hard to pronounce, saying his sins were forgiven would be met with great opposition because it was considered blasphemy, because only God could forgive sins. Mark 2 verses 10 to 12, KJV, But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. That ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, Jesus said, Thy sins be forgiven thee, so they would know he was no ordinary man. The Son of Man is a messianic title of Jesus. Ezekiel mentions this title 93 times. Luke's Gospel mentions it the most as his focus was on Jesus' humanity. Daniel 7 verse 13 KJV I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. John 12 verse 34 KJV The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever, and how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up. Who is this son of man? Acts 7 verse 56 KJV And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. 
The power to remit sins would later be given to the 12 in John 20 verse 23 as part of the kingdom church. That power ceased when the dispensation of grace was ushered in. John 20 verse 23 KJV Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Mark 2 verses 13 to 14, KJV, And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi the son of Alphaeus sitting at the receipt of custom, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. Levi, this is Matthew who wrote the book of Matthew. Sitting at the receipt of custom, this meant that he was a publican, otherwise known as a tax collector. Mark 2 verses 15 to 17, KJV, And it came to pass, that, as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The publicans and sinners knew they were not right with God, but the Pharisees thought that they were righteous. Fasting question Matthew 9,14-17 and Luke 5,33-39. Mark 2 verse 18, KJV, And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast, and they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast? This was asked by one of John's disciples. Matthew 9 verse 14 KJV Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, but thy disciples fast not? Mark 2 verses 19 to 20 KJV And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast, while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come, when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. The children of the bride chamber, they were Jesus' disciples. The bridegroom, this is Jesus. The days will come, Jesus tells his disciples, the children of the bride chamber, of his ascension into heaven which will cause them to fast in those days. Mark 2 verse 21, KJV, No man also seweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. No man seweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, John, and the Pharisees were operating, in an old way, as if the bridegroom wasn't there with them. Jesus' disciples, the children of the bride chamber, were acting correctly, in a new way, because the bridegroom was with them. John 3 verse 29 KJV He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. Mark 2 verse 22 KJV And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred, but new wine must be put into new bottles. Old bottles the Pharisees are the old bottles. New wine must be put into new bottles. The new wine represents the new teachings concerning the kingdom like not fasting while the bridegroom was with them. The new bottles represented new Jews hearing and receiving the gospel of the kingdom. Jeremiah 13 verses 13 to 14 KJV Then shalt thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will fill all the inhabitants of this land, even the kings that sit upon David's throne, and the priests, and the prophets, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, with drunkenness. And I will dash them one against another, even the fathers and the sons together, saith the Lord, I will not pity, nor spare, nor have mercy, but destroy them. Plucking ears of corn Matthew 12 colon 1 dash 8 and Luke 6 colon 1 dash 5. Mark 2 verses 23 to 26, KJV, And it came to pass, that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began, as they went, to pluck the ears of corn. 
And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did, when he had need, and was in hung red, he, and they that were with him? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest, and did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. 1 Samuel 21 verse 4 KJV And the priest answered David, and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread, if the young men have kept themselves at least from women. David was Israel's rightful king, and those that followed him were his righteous servants, just like Jesus is the future king of the Jews, and his disciples are going to serve as priests in the coming kingdom. The Pharisees will not become priests as promised to the children of Israel in the law of Moses because they did not know the scriptures and exalted the teaching of the elders over the commandments of God. Mark 2 verses 27 to 28, KJV, And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Matthew 12 verse 8, KJV. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. The Pharisees continually kept adding to the word of God with their traditions and made many of them void. The Sabbath is a picture of the future kingdom where God will dwell with his creation. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Chapter 3 Jesus heals on the Sabbath Matthew 12, 9-14 and Luke 6, 6-11. Mark 3 verses 1 to 6, KJV, And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil? To save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth, and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days? The Sabbath day represented their future kingdom rest. These Pharisees wanted to condemn Jesus so much that they wanted to see if he would dare heal someone on the Sabbath day so they could report him. They should have reported he is the Messiah, he healed someone today. They were blinded by the hardness of their hearts. The Herodians, a political party loyal to Herod. The Pharisees yoked up with the Herodians to fight a common enemy that threatened their existence, the followers of Jesus. Mark 12 verse 13. Mark 3 verses 7 to 12, KJV, But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and from beyond Jordan, and they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples, that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plagues. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him, and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. The Son of God is the second person of the Godhead slash Trinity. Colossians 2 verse 9 KJV For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 1 John 5 verse 7 KJV For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. They should not make him known, Jesus charged the unclean spirits not to make him known as the Son of God, because people would not believe unclean spirits. His signs and his preaching were supposed to do that, but sadly, many did not believe it either. Jesus calls the twelve Matthew 10, 1-4 and Luke 6, 12-16. Mark 3, verse 13, KJV, And he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. 
He goeth up into a mountain. Mountains in the Bible are often used to describe kingdoms when speaking prophetically. Daniel 2 verse 45 KJV Forasmuch as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. In the future kingdom spoken of by Daniel these twelve would be its future supreme court sitting as judges. Mark 3 verse 14, KJV, And he ordained twelve, that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. He ordained twelve, there will be twelve apostles who will sit on twelve thrones in that kingdom judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew 19 verse 28 KJV And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This meant that they would replace all the Pharisees and Sadducees, as well as the Herodians as Israel's future leaders in the soon coming kingdom. He surnamed Isaiah 45 colon 4. Mark 3 verses 15 to 16, KJV, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils, and Simon he surnamed Peter. He surnamed Peter, this is Petros in the Greek, meaning a stone. Mark 3 verse 17, KJV, and James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, which is, the sons of thunder. He surnamed them Boanerges, this meant the sons of thunder. It was probably a prophetic title related to their boldness in preaching. They both would thunder words from heaven with their voices. 2 Samuel 22 verse 14 KJV The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered His voice. Mark 3 verse 18 KJV And Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanite. Simon the Canaanite, the Canaanites were disinherited from the land because of their sexual immorality. He is also called Simon Zelotes, the Zealot, in Luke 6 verse 15 KJV, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called Zelotes, Acts 1 verse 13 KJV, and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter, and James, and John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. He was a Jew who had lived in what remained of the area known as Canaan, along the northern border of Israel. All the apostles were Jews. Mark 3 verse 19, KJV, and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him, and they went into an house. Judas Iscariot, he was surnamed Iscariot. Luke 22 verse 3 KJV Then entered Satan into Judas surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Carioth was the name of his hometown mentioned in Joshua 15 verse 25 KJV, and Hazer, Hadada, and Carioth, and Hezron, which is Hazer, which is a city of Judah near the border of Edom and Moab. This surname was necessary because there were many Jews with the name of Judas, Judah, in Israel. The two letters is in front of Cariot mean the man of. So, Judas Iscariot meant, Judas, the man of Carioth. Blaspheme against the Holy Ghost Matthew 12 colon 22 dash 32 and Luke 11 colon 14 dash 26. Mark 3 verses 20 to 21, KJV, and the multitude cometh together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. His friends, this is the only time we hear about Jesus' friends. They were fair-weather friends at best. They are not heard from again as they quickly became ashamed of Jesus and his words once he began his ministry. Mark 3 verses 22 to 25, KJV, And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. 
And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Beelzebub, the lord of the flies, another title of Satan. If a house be divided, the house of Israel was Satan's house because the Jews had given themselves over to him. Rome and the Herodians joined up with the Pharisees to fight against their Messiah. Mark 3 verses 26 to 27, KJV, And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. He will first bind the strong man, Satan is the strong man, and this earth, specifically the land of Israel, was his home as the god of this world. Satan's unclean spirits had taken up residence in many people because they had turned their back on the covenant they made with God at Sinai. Jesus came to reclaim them from the snare of the devil. He would bind them and cast them out. Satan will first be bound and then cast into the pit during the millennial kingdom. Jeremiah 31 verses 10 to 12 KJV. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles of far off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him, as a shepherd doth his flock. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord, for wheat, and for wine, and for oil, and for the young of the flock and of the herd, and their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Revelation 20 verse 2 KJV And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Mark 3 verses 28 to 30 KJV Verily I say unto you, All sin shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewithsoever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. Blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. They were claiming that Jesus was doing his miracles by the power of the devil. Matthew 12 verses 31 to 32 KJV Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of man, it shall be forgiven him, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Jesus' brethren and his mother Matthew 12, 46-50 and Luke 8, 19-21. Mark 3, verses 31-35, KJV, There came then his brethren and his mother, and, standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said, Unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, who is my mother, or my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him, and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother, and my sister, and mother. Who is my mother, or my brethren? Jesus' family did not travel with him at this point. When they showed up, Jesus used the occasion to teach his disciples that fellow believers are much closer to them than their own family members. Two of Jesus' half-brothers, James, and Judah did eventually believe Jesus was the Messiah, but only after his resurrection. Chapter 4 Jesus teaches by parables Matthew 13, 1-53 and Luke 8, 1-18. Mark 4 verses 1-9, KJV, And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship, and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth, but when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. 
and some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth, some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Those who believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God would understand his parables, but to the rest they just seemed like good instructions for farming. Mysteries of the Kingdom of God Matthew 13 11 and Luke 8 10 Mark 4 verses 10 to 12 KJV And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see, and not perceive, and hearing they may hear, and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. Isaiah 6 verse 10 KJV Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Parable Parables were meant to conceal the mysteries of the kingdom from those that did not believe. Unto you it is given Jesus would then expound on these teachings to the remnant of believers that made up the little flock. Luke 12 verse 32 KJV Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The parable of the sower explained Matthew 13 colon 18 dash 23 and Luke 8 colon 11 dash 15, Mark 4 verses 13 to 15, KJV, and he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. The sower soweth the word, it is implied that the word is represented as seed that is being sown which is not mentioned by Mark. Matthew 13 verse 20 tells us that the sower is sowing seed. Matthew 13 verse 20 KJV but he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. The wayside, they have the word taken from them immediately by Satan. Stony ground Matthew 13, 20-21 and Luke 8, 13. Mark 4 verses 16 to 17, KJV, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure, but for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution are saith for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. The stony ground, the word does not take root because they compromise as persecution comes. Endure, but for a time, under the gospel of the kingdom preaching the hearers had to endure unto the end. Matthew 24 verse 14 KJV And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Those that only endured, but for a time, could not enter the kingdom because their fruit did not remain. That is not true for a believer today. We do not endure unto the end in this present dispensation of grace. Among thorns Matthew 13 22 and Luke 8 14. Mark 4 verses 18 to 19, KJV, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Among thorns, the thorns are the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts. These listeners had to produce fruits, or they would not enter into their kingdom. This is not written to us today. Good Ground Matthew 13 23 and Luke 8 15. Mark 4 verse 20, KJV, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. Good ground, the good ground was those that believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God who would produce fruit that remained. They would enter into their kingdom. A candle Luke 8 colon 16 18.
Mark 4 verses 21 to 23, KJV, And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel, or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid, which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. A candle, Israel failed for the most part in being a light even to their own people while Christ was on the earth and even after his resurrection. If any man have ears to hear, the things that were previously hid concerning the kingdom, the mysteries, were being made manifest to the little flock of believers because they had ears to hear. Take heed what ye hear Matthew 13, 12-17 and Luke 8, 18. Mark 4 verses 24-25 KJV, and he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear, with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that here shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given, and he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Take heed what ye hear, the Pharisees and Sadducees had so much knowledge, but they did not have the spiritual understanding to see what was right in front of them, so God took away that which they had. The Kingdom of God. Mark 4 verses 26 to 29, KJV, And he said, So is the Kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. When the fruit is brought forth, the 144,000 are the first fruits in Revelation 14 verse 14. Revelation 14 verses 14 to 16, KJV, And I looked, and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle, and reap for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth. And the earth was reaped. A grain of mustard seed Matthew 13,31-32 and Luke 13,18-19. Mark 4 verses 30-32, KJV, And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth, but when it is sown, it groweth up, and becometh greater than all herbs, and shutteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. We spiritualize these teachings today and try to make Israel's kingdom into the church. It is not. A grain of mustard seed, the kingdom is the literal physical visible kingdom that will come after the tribulation period is over, when Christ will reign on earth for a thousand years. Christ planted the seeds for the future kingdom in the nation of Israel, who was less than all the nations that be in the earth, with the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom saints began to grow, first with the twelve and then with the little flock. Deuteronomy 7 verses 6 to 8 KJV For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people, but because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt. Luke 12 verse 32 Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Then the one who planted the seed will come back and gather his crop, believing Israel, into the garner, a barn, which represents the kingdom. The kingdom will be, unlike any other kingdom that has ever existed, as it will dwarf all others, and it will never end. Mark 4 verses 33 to 34, KJV, And with many such parables spake ye the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. 
But without a parable spake he not unto them, and when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. There came a point in Jesus' ministry where he spoke only in parables in public once the religious had heard and seen enough truth and rejected it. He was taking away what they had and giving it to those with hearts to understand. The Great Storm Matthew 8, 23-27 and Luke 8, 22-25. Mark 4 verses 35 to 41, KJV, And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? They naturally feared for their lives, but the giver and sustainer of life was in the boat with them, their faith should have calmed them. There arose a great storm, Jesus knew the storm was going to come and yet he was resting in what he was sent to do, and he would not be stopped by a temporary storm. He would use the storm to paint a picture for the saints that will go through a great storm in the great tribulation period. Carest thou not that we perish, Jesus cared, and none of them perished. During the great tribulation period when it seems like God will have forgotten the little flock, he will appear and destroy his enemies and set up his kingdom and they will have their kingdom of rest. Chapter 5 The Legion of Devils Matthew 8,28-34 and Luke 8,26-39 Mark 5 verse 1 KJV And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. The country of the Gadarenes, it was on the northeast corner of the Sea of Galilee. The city of Gadara is there where the man with a legion of devils was from. Mark 5 verses 2 to 5, KJV, And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, and in the tombs, crying, and cutting himself with stones. An unclean spirit, a devil. No man could bind him, others had tried to bind him in the past but they could not. Jesus could not only bind him, but he could also cast him out. Satan will be bound by Jesus with a chain of darkness in the pit during the millennial kingdom. Revelation 20 verses 1 to 3 KJV And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. Mark 5 verses 6 to 8, KJV, But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God, the Spirit knew who Jesus was, even the twelve apostles were unsure at this point who Jesus was exactly. Torment me not, it was the man who initially cried out to Jesus that he not torment him, and in the next verses we noticed it was the devil speaking through him. Mark 5 verses 9 to 10, KJV, And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Legion, many, two thousand. 
Verse 13 below. A Roman legion was anywhere from 1,000 to 6,000 men, so there could have been one to three devils in each swine. He besought him much, he begged him repeatedly. Devils are territorial, and they were to stay where they were placed by Satan. We read of spirits referred to as princes i.e., the prince of Persia in Daniel 10 verse 20 and they were placed over an area to bring it under subjection to the devil. Daniel 10 verse 20 KJV Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia, and when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. Mark 5 verses 11 to 17, KJV, Now there is there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea, they were about two thousand winky face and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city, and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion, sitting, and clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. The devil, Notice that in the text the man is possessed with the devil, singular, but it also says that he has a legion of devils inside him. They began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. The people should have begged him to stay, but they did not. Mark 5 verses 18 to 20, KJV, And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Go home to thy friends, and tell them, This man was far from the will of God. Imagine what he must have had to have done to have attracted a legion of devils into him. He was to tell them how good God had been unto him. He was to tell them the good news of the kingdom. The devils would not have entered into a God-fearing Jew, but they would have gladly entered into one who had stooped so low and far from the law as to be one who hung out with pig-farming Gentiles. Pigs were unclean, and they made this Jewish person unclean according to the law, thus opening the door at that time for devils to enter him. Leviticus 11 verse 7 KJV And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Decapolis, ten Roman cities in a league, of which Gadara was one of them. They were made up primarily of Gentiles. Damascus and Ammon belongs to this league, and Bichian was its only city on the west side of the Jordan River. Jairus' daughter and a woman healed Matthew 9.18 and Luke 8.40-56. Mark 5 verses 21-34, KJV, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter leith at the point of death, I pray thee, come, and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press, and said, Who touched my clothes? 
And his disciples said unto him, Thou sayest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole, go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. This woman and Jairus' daughter both represent Israel as you see the number twelve associated with each one of them. Twelve years, the woman had an issue of blood twelve years and did everything she could to get relief for herself including spending all that she had, and she only got worse. Israel was trying to please God with their own works, and they could not, and things only got worse for Israel. This woman who represents the believing Israel did eventually abandon her faith in her doctors and place her faith in the great physician and her faith got her the healing she wanted. Mark 5 verses 35 to 39, KJV, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead, why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter, and James, and John the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead but sleepeth. Adieu, fuss. Mark 5 verses 40 to 43, KJV, and they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and said unto her, Talitha kumi, which is, being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. She was of the age of twelve years. Again, we see the number twelve in the story about the daughter of a rabbi who was sick and died, but Jesus told her father to believe, and he resurrected her. He will resurrect all the believing Jews from the twelve tribes of Israel, so they will rule with him in the kingdom as priests. Obviously, this twelve-year-old girl was not the one that possessed the faith that Jesus could raise her, it was her father. Those in the tribulation period will have to have placed their faith in Christ and followed him during that time in order to be resurrected into their kingdom. John 11 verse 25 Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection, and the life, he that believeth in me, thou he were dead, yet shall he live. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, the religious would want to kill her as they eventually wanted to kill Lazarus, whom Christ rose from the dead. John 12 verse 10 KJV But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. 